So let's take a look at the loop jump. The loop jump is an edge jump that takes up off of your right foot, unlike the salco, which takes up off your left foot. So it takes off of your right foot and you're landing on the right foot. So you're taking off of the same foot that you're landing on, which makes it reasonably simple. The only thing that makes it a little bit more difficult is that there's a single rotation in the middle of the jump. So let's look at the takeoff for the loop jump. Unlike the waltz jump and the axle, it's the same position that you've got for every single one of your other jumps in, involving your arms. Your arms, it's left arm in front and right arm behind. That is, again, because that left arm checks your rotation and your right arm creates the rotation. So your left arm isn't really being used too much to generate rotation. It's mainly the right arm, but both of the arms are helping you to get up in the air also. Um, <clears throat> so those are the arm positions to start off with. Again, left arm in front and right arm strongly behind you. You should really have a nice open shoulder. As that right arm's coming around, you want to still keep an open arm there. I see a lot of people trying to turn their shoulders in when they jump and getting really high with their shoulders. Make sure your elbows always stay underneath your wrists, so your wrists are higher than your elbows. That allows you to kind of keep a nice level balanced position with your shoulders down, going up into the air and getting into a nice rotating position. Position of your legs going into this jump will be most of your weight wants to be over that right foot as that's the jump the foot that you'll be taking up off of. You can have the left foot on the floor but it's placed down lightly so if I was to take my left foot off I could still balance. My left foot's just there along for the ride and trying to help you create a nice hook going into that jump. So as you can also see with both of my feet my left foot is slightly across my right foot. My right foot is the main foot that I'm standing on but I place my left foot almost inside my, my right foot because if you think about the circle we're creating is going towards my right here so we want the left foot inside the circle that we're creating because that is going to be the way that we're jumping therefore you want everything over the right side in the air so anything you have sticking out here over the left side going into this jump is going to cause you troubles some of the common mistakes I see with the loop jump are when people start to curve they lean out in the wrong direction they lean out on their sh left shoulder, there's so much weight over the left side. Their left leg even starts off here sometimes and it starts picking up and you get wide feet in the air. This jump is one of the most simple jumps but it's the most difficult to keep simple, if that makes sense. You want to make sure that you keep everything over that right side and it stays there throughout the whole of the takeoff, throughout the whole of the air position, the, uh, all of your in, in the middle of the air and also on your landing. Everything, all of your weight is over the right. Even on the landing, my head's over the right, my arms and my shoulders are facing to the right and my, my leg, my, all my weight is over the right foot. In the air, all my weight is over the right side. I'm not in the middle, I'm not over here on the left. I'm slightly over that right side with all of my weight up and over my right leg in the air with my left leg just sticking into my right leg going along for the ride. So to keep it simple on that takeoff, keep everything on that right side in that position. You can see that my, my shoulders are facing into the right here, my head will be facing into the right, my left arm is over the right side and my right arm is here ready to drive around as well. So as I go up into the air, everything stays on that right side going up. So let's take a look at the single loop jump now including the takeoff and the air position. So if I set up, I'm going to come around here and set up for my single loop. You see that I get my position, my left foot's across, curve, up. So I mentioned curving, going into your single loop jump. This is what creates the rotation. If you start in a straight line and you don't curve, it's going to be very difficult to get your rotation. Just like the single salco, the other edge jump, that's a little bit similar to the loop jump, you have a nice hook to get your rotation started. Not only does it get your rotation started, but it also throws you up into the air as well. You're turning some of that movement that you've got going backwards into upward momentum. It's taking you up into the air. In order to create, in order to turn that backwards momentum you've got going on there to upward momentum, you've got a hook. So it really pushes you up off of the toes when you finally get to the jump. So important things to remember whilst you're doing this curve going into the loop jump is to not move your arms or legs. You need to move, you need to start the curve by bending your knees and using your whole body. Your whole body starts off nice and straight. Use your whole body to slightly lean in. That's where the hook starts coming from. And the knee bend, the progressive knee bend is where your hook gets tighter and tighter and tighter. So you start off with a reasonably shallow curve and it gets tighter and tighter until the end when it really takes off nice and sharply in order to shoot you up into the air. So let's take a look at that now again with the, with the hook I've got on the end. So I start off in a straight line, I've got my backwards momentum here, I hook and it pops me up into the air nicely. Not only did it give me enough height, it also gave me enough rotation to make sure I finished a single rotation. Because as you noticed, I took off facing you guys and I landed facing you guys. That means it's one whole rotation starting from backwards and finishing facing backwards also.